Hi, I'm Larissa from Beekeeping Made Simple, and this is about the boxes on your Langstroth style hive. So um, there are so many different names for this part of the beehive, and it makes things confusing, but at its most basic level, it is super simple. You have a board, which is the bottom of the hive. You put boxes on top with frames inside them, and then you put another board on top, which we call the lid. So there are three different size boxes you can use in your Langstroth style hive. Um, the deepest box, the first one I want to talk about is called the deep or the brood box or the hive body. There's three different names for this thing. I call it the deep or the brood box and um, it's nine and five eighths of an inch deep. Um, if you're buying your equipment in the United States, it can vary a little bit in other countries. And this box is usually what you start out with in the beehive. That's where the brood is, which is why some people call it the brood box. And um, it's pretty standard for people to have one or two of these boxes on their hive. And then the second kind of box I want to talk about is called a medium. That's about six and five eighths of an inch deep. So not as deep as the brood box. And um, these are usually used for the honey part of the hive. Uh, let's see, what are the other names people call these things? I had to write it down because I can't even remember all the different names for these things. Uh, they're called mediums, sometimes they're called honey supers. Um, shell no, they're not called shallows. Illinois super, western, hive. It, all you need to know is that they are six and five eighths of an inch deep and they're called a medium. And then you have the shallow, the most shallow box, which some people call the shallow or the honey super. And that is five and three quarters of an inch deep. So just slightly more shallow than the medium. And this is where people get confused because you have two different size boxes that are only about an inch difference in height. So when do you use one versus the other? Well, to be honest, it doesn't really matter that much. You use one or the other. <laughs> um, so, if you're confused, if you don't know what to get, you're just starting out and you're learning tons of information, this is just one more thing you don't quite get, keep it easy for yourself. Go to a beekeeping supply pit place and just buy the starter kit. Or the other way you can really keep it easy is to just make sure that you buy the box with the frames inside it because it doesn't matter as much the depth of the boxes just as long as you have frames that fit inside these boxes. But okay, so this is the norm, and this is the way you'll see most beekeepers doing it, especially in areas where you have a cold winter and you're winterizing your hive and you have a frost and a time when the bees are all clustered up and you're not opening your hive. What you usually do is you have two deep boxes. And this is the first box is going to be almost all brood, a little bit of honey. Then you add a second box on top, which is also another deep. It'll be some brood, some honey, half and half usually and then you add on honey supers as needed um, and these are the shallow ones the ones that are four and five and three quarters of an inch so when you're buying your boxes you want to buy two deeps plus frames to go inside it two to three honey supers uh, with frames inside. You can get three if you really think you're going to be having a lot of honey coming in, but two should be sufficient. And that's the norm, and that's what most people do. Now, there are some other ways to do it depending on whether you want something that weighs less so that it's easier on your back, or you want something that's easier so you only have one size box, which is one size frame, which makes interchanging things easier, or maybe you want to go as cheaply as possible and have everything have fewer equipment but it's going to be heavier so i'm going to go through those options for a way you can set up your hive so first of all a lot of beekeepers and personally i wish i had done this as well is they buy all medium sized boxes so that's the box in in between um, the one that is six and about three quarters of an inch in depth and that's it. No deep boxes, no shallows, just medium boxes. And that's because it's somewhere in the middle. So instead of 
having different size frames that you go inside your beehive, you have one size frame. If you need to make splits, if you need to move frames around in your hive, everything is interchangeable and works in every single box. It makes things a whole lot easier. And then you can buy a, a box of like 100 frames, which is a lot cheaper because you're buying in bulk, as opposed to buying 20 frames of this size and 20 frames of that size. So that is one way to make things easier. Um, downside to that is that you're going to need more boxes because 10 of these deep frames will hold a lot more than 10 of a medium sized frame. So instead of needing one bird box, you'll need two mediums. It's going to cost a little bit extra money. It's going to require more assemblage, but once you have it going, and if you only have one or two hives, it's, it's not too big of a deal, um, makes life easier. The other downside is that it is heavier to lift a medium sized box than a shallow box because uh, the weight difference is about 15 pounds. So a shallow box is roughly, they say 40 pounds in weight when full, and then a medium box is like 55 pounds when full. So if you're using medium supers, it's a little bit heavier. Now, if you want the least amount of weight, and you want to lift the, the lightest box possible, then you'll want to use honey supers. So this is what I do personally. Um, uh, I start out, I just have one deep box on all of my beehives. And then all the boxes above that are shallows, the honey supers that are five and three quarters of an inch deep. And that is because this first box, this first deep box that you put on the hive, you're very rarely, if ever, picking up. So it can be a deep and it can get heavy and it's fine. And it's also a lot of brood in there, which isn't as heavy as honey. All the boxes up above it are the shallow boxes, which are the lightest boxes you can use. And so um, I don't have to worry about killing my back, especially when I was pregnant. You know, you're not supposed to be living things that weigh too much towards the end of your pregnancy and it made things easier. Um, the downside to that way is that you need a couple of extra boxes. But I'm fine with that. It's every beehive I need one extra super on it. It's better if it saves on my back every single week I'm opening the beehive. Now the other thing I wanted to mention is that there is another option for you if you want your box to weigh even less. And that is to get an 8 frame box instead of a 10 frame box. With an 8 frame box you fit 8 frames in here. So width wise the box isn't as large. Um, and if you have trouble lifting heavy things this is really the ideal way to go. But just once you start with one size that's all you can use because you can't put an 8 frame box on top of a 10 frame box or the other way around. You can mix and match depth boxes in a beehive and it's okay, but you cannot mix and match widths on a beehive for obvious reasons, I would think. Um, so once you go with an eight or a 10 frame, all of them have to be eight or 10 frame. And just like with the height, if you get an eight frame box, you're going to need more boxes because it holds less. If you get 10 frame boxes, you're going to need fewer boxes, but the box is going to weigh more. So those are your options. I hope that helps to clarify things. And don't worry about the terminology. What you need to be concerned about is the dimensions. And when you go to a beekeeping supply website, it will say the dimensions. It will say honey super or medium or whatever term, whatever name they want to use for the box, they have the depth in there and that's what you need to know now you might be getting confused about like well where does the brood go where does the honey go how am i supposed to tell the bees what to do what in the beehive well you don't the bees do what they want to you put the bees in the first box of your hive which would be your deep or your medium and they start out by building brood because that's most important that they have future generations of bees in the hive and then you put out another box onto the beehive once you only have a couple of empty frames in that box. And then they'll decide how much more brood that is needed in the hive. And once um, the queen is laying and she has enough room to lay her brood, there's also bees bringing in honey in the empty sections, 
Once the second box is full, then you add another box and another box. Sometimes the queen will try to lay brood in upper boxes, but most of the time she doesn't. Um, so you can get queen excluders to keep her down so that the brood is limited to two boxes maximum. I don't do that because I don't like to get that involved into the bees' lives. And I find that it's very rarely necessary anyway. So don't worry about who's doing what where. They do, they figure that out. It's not the beekeeper's job to figure that part out. When trying to figure out what kind of frames to get for your boxes, your frames are gonna be just slightly shorter than the size box. So you don't have to worry too much about the height of the frame, you just know that if it says on the bee supply website that your box is nine and five eighths of an inch. You wanna look for frames that are like roughly nine and a half inches. Uh, it, it's really, you, there's just gonna be that little bee space gap between the frame and the very bottom of the box. The frame sizes, um, there's, there's not a ton to choose from. They're either the size for the deep, the medium, or the shallow. And so you just stack these boxes on top, just like this, and you will usually need a hive tool to pry them apart, but that is because the bees glue the boxes together with propolis, which is a uh, plant sap that they gather. And so the beekeeper does not have to do anything to attach the boxes together. They stay together all on their own, unless like a cow comes and decides to use it as a back scratch, or you have a hurricane with super strong winds or something like that. And so don't worry if this is confusing for you. It's, I still get confused. I mean, I have my notes right here because I don't always remember all of the different names and the sizes. Um, I go by what I did when I worked for a commercial apiary. They had a deep box and honey supers. And so that's what I use as well. They gave me some free equipment when I was first starting out. So that's what I go with. Um, it's. Do the bees care? I don't think so. I caught a swarm of bees in a shoebox. I found a swarm of bees that had a pretty established hive in a very large cardboard box in someone's backyard. Someone told me that they captured a swarm of bees that had created a hive in a refrigerator. So no, I don't think an eight or a 10 frame box makes that much of a difference. Uh, really, I would go by what you think is going to work best for you. Oh, the one other thing I wanted to mention is if you plan on buying a nuke, because there are two ways to buy bees, a package of bees or a nuke. If you do buy a nuke or if you plan on selling nukes uh, later down the line, you're going to want to put your brood in deep boxes. At the very least, you want to have one deep box on your hive and that is because nukes are usually sold with deep frames if you plan on buying a package then you don't have to worry about it um, you're just buying bees in a screened container and you can start however way you want to but that is a, a good thing to keep in mind here in hawaii I know only one farm on the entire island that sells packages of bees and that's because they focus on top bar beehives the rest of the beekeepers sell nukes and as a beekeeper um, I strongly recommend beginners to get started with nukes over packages um, especially if you live in an area with a uh, spring where it doesn't get warm until later in the spring like say May or you have a short warm honey season when the bees are out gathering you really want them to have brood and a queen that's laying and, and an established little hive going already. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you click the like button because that does help other people find this video. And if you'd like to see the new videos we put out, which is every single week, hit the subscribe button and then the bell icon so that you're emailed when new videos come out. And if you are thinking about getting started keeping bees, go to our website, beekeepingmadesimple.com and there is a free ebook it's called the seven steps to getting started keeping bees that we created and it is really everything i put in there that i wish i knew when i was keeping bees to make the getting started process as easy and not confusing as possible